In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer questions asked by listeners like you. So we answer four fitness and health questions, but then the way we open the episode up is we talk about current events, things that are in the news. We talk about our lives. We also mention our sponsors. So here's what we talked about in this episode. We started by talking about the meaning of rock and roll. Justin <laughs> uh, told us what rock and roll means, and he was right. I can't believe you guys didn't know that. Yeah, and we were wrong. Uh, episode 1198, finally, Justin said something. Was- <laughs> Get out of here with all this dramatic <laughs> I know. nonsense. Then I talked about a study that showed that people can predict uh, when other people are sick, just by looking at their face, that seems kind of obvious if you ask me. Totally have sick face, bro. Yeah. We talked about the health at any size movement. Adam's pissing people off again. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned the key to long to a long life. Um, we talked about a Texas law in which you can actually fight somebody and not get in trouble. Way to go, Texas. Uh, Justin brought up a bodybuilder who married his sex doll. That's kind of weird. <laughs> I talked about the difference between heritage pork and regular pork. Now, heritage pork tastes better. It's got better marbling. It's also raised more humanely. Um, And some of our favorite, excuse me, sources of heritage pork come from Butcher Box. Now, this is a company that delivers heritage pork and grass-fed beef to your door. They also have salmon, sockeye salmon. They'll deliver that to your door. It's high quality, great prices, and we have a discount for you. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump, you will get two pounds of wild Alaskan salmon for free and $20 off. Boom. That's right. Then we talked about the, uh, how you could use rhodiola in place of caffeine. So if you're going on a caffeine fast, you want to rebuild your, your, your sensitivity to caffeine. So it feels amazing again, but it sucks to go off caffeine. Rhodiola. You feel tired. Try rhodiola. It's a great herb. It's adaptogenic. It's got stimulating properties. It's also found in Organifi's red juice. Now, Organifi makes organic supplements and products like protein powders, green juices, and the red juice that I talked about that contains rhodiola. We have a discount for you. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump, you'll get 20% off. And then I talked about how health professionals are making a strong call for making exercise the first prescription uh, for mental health before any psychiatric drugs. Then we got into answering the questions. The first question was, is it counterproductive to do low reps and high reps in the same workout? The next question, uh, you talk a lot about warm-ups, but what about warm-downs? So what do you do at the end of your workout to enhance the productivity Somebody warm me down. of your workout? The third question, this person says they have a persistent knot on the left side of their neck and a knot on the right side of their back, and it feels better when they work out, but then it comes back, like what the hell is going on? And the final question, this person has pronation distortion, meaning their foot flattens out and turns out, so they have no arch. And they thought they they've heard that it's been caused by a weakness in their abs. How can they fix it? Like what's going on? So we talk all about how to deal with pronation distortion, which if you're listening to this podcast, about 60 to 80 percent of you have to some degree. Now, before the episode starts, remember this maps hit is 50% off. This is huge. Our MAPS HIT program is a high-intensity interval training program. So this is a fat-burning program. It's designed specifically to burn the most amount of body fat and preserve the most amount of muscle. It's HIT training done the right way. Your exercises and workouts are all mapped out for you. You have exercise demos and videos so you can watch the form, see what you're doing. There's three levels to MAPS HIT, so you can start a beginner, move to intermediate, and advanced. It's a short but super effective fat-burning workout. It's 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com. And use the code HIT50, H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. Where does, the, where does that come from, by the way? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. It's a term for sex. What? Is it really? Rock and roll, yeah. Whoa. I've just, I mean, do I have to like act it out? You roll when you have sex? Apparently, yeah. That, that, that is was that, like, it, like in before the 50s, I think. Is that really, from. is That's that a, really where the term came from? I'm pretty no, sure. No, it's not. Okay, look it up. Google that shit, Douglas. Get him, Justin. Get him. Look it up. Sal's been losing yeah, a lot lately. Let's see if he's going to Yeah, rock. name the last time I lost. <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> that episode we did air yesterday. Yeah, uh, so rocking, well, I mean, it could very well be, but I mean, rolling? 
Who the hell's rolling? I know. I don't know. I'm, apparently, that's how they did it back then. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I you roll. I roll every once in a while. You yeah. don't do the roll like while you're hitting it. Like, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Just do a couple yeah. rolls. The or origin of, yeah. of rock and roll. That's, that's kind of weird. Passion and out of control gets like rolling around every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. It just sucks when you're okay. On a- from rock, move back and forth, and roll. Originally a verb phrase common among African Americans, meaning to have sexual intercourse. Thank you. Wow. Hold Justin, on a second. Thank you. Justin wins. Hold on a second. Technically, it's a what eu- euphemism? <laughs> no, he's right. He is right. <laughs> wow. He is right. That's I pretty- did not know that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it means yeah. to bang. Yeah. To it have does. sex. Of course it does. Wow. Lots of yeah. It, I don't know. That's why uh, I think everybody was so offended. You know, with like the gyrating of the hips and all these different movements and that style of music was like because all the Puritans, you know, back in the day, like the- yeah. No wonder Elvis was such a bad guy. Exactly. Well, dude. Because he's he's thrusting the he's, hips he's and right playing in the face with it yeah. and playing rock yeah. and roll. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's, yeah. you know, it's funny is that you can't shock anybody anymore, can you? Yeah, no, you can't. You can get on stage and just, I mean, I, I, you'd have to like take a shit or something, dude. Yeah. They to have, get people to say. What something. is that one where they do penis puppets? There's like a whole show where like these guys get up on stage and they they fold it into puppets. Yeah, yeah, huh? That's a- <laughs> See, I'm just dropping all kinds of new things. That's for you, Adam. that's a, that's a that, that was a it's like a play, right? Yeah, Back it's a play. Up. What are you talking about? So right guys now? go on stage and they use like the they use yeah. a flashlight and they do weird shit and they you know like they, use, they get their scrotum, you know, like the bat wing and you know the, all those like tricks <laughs> and things that we did as kids, you know, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> with, with your wang and balls. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on, just, that was just you and your friends. Justin, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You're alone. On every this. boy did that, dude. No, right? just you and your friends. <laughs> just, I, I, I wasn't like showing it to everybody, but I was definitely figuring it out. Wait a second. So this the, is the bat wing. <laughs> yeah, man. So this. Wait, wait, hold on. What's the bat wing? So you, well, you pull it all. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. Google it. It's something to do with your scrotum. Wait, wait, wait. So in. this is like a like full on production. The, this is they travel around and yeah. they do puppets with their 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 junk. They make yeah. like different. They don't they don't do it. They don't play music or anything else. They I, just do that. I think it is. It's like it's kind of comedy and it's like anyways. Yeah, they try and make it like uh, it's like carnival act kind of. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like you know ant eater or like, da, 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 like you know D- like, Doug, Doug is over there nodding his head like he's been to a few of them already. <laughs> is, that, is this true, Doug? Have you been this, to? A yeah, few they're them? amazing, really. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the bat wing, yeah. the bat wing. <laughs> that was your favorite one, and huh? the Joker, yeah. <laughs> the Joker. Yeah, not the ant eater. Well, uh, one, one time I saw these uh, monks who, to, you know how you sometimes you see those Chinese monks that, and they'll d- to demonstrate their strength, mm-hmm. they'll do weird shit like. Get kicked in the balls or get oh, hit yeah, in the yeah. chest with a hammer or some weird shit. Yeah, which I don't, I don't get that. But anyway, yeah, there were some that no, w- that would literally, maybe they were Indian. They would, they took a stick and they they wrapped their penis around the stick and stretched it and then picked oh. up and then picked up like heavy objects hanging off their their their, their wing. Yeah, and they just to show their. their I mean, they got they got wang strength. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that. And if yeah. you think about it, let's say you're let's say that's your opponent. Let's say you're you're gonna get a fight. And right? here we that's thought, intimidating. And he, yeah, you're, I'm not fucking with that. <laughs> he can take his he can pick up <laughs> yeah. heavy shit with yeah. his dick. I'm not yeah, touching I don't that even guy. Know what's gonna happen to me? He'll yeah. kick my ass for sure. Fighting this guy. Yeah. New maps program. Maps bat wing. Maps bat wing. Maps bat wing. Justin's gonna be the model on this that's one. So hey, dis- I got this, guys. Uh, that's so I, disgusting. I worked my whole life for this you moment. Your, you and your buddies. Yeah. <laughs> that's so terrible. Yeah. You mean my buddies? Hey, check this one out. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, yeah. look, you're doing it wrong. Let me help you. Yeah. Ah, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Hey, so you guys want to hear some some cool science? Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's just, yeah. Let's just, transition out of this. Uh, there was this this study that was done on uh, on people, and they were trying to see how effective we are at identifying whether or not someone's sick just by looking at their face. So just by looking at a picture of someone's <laughs> You're face. You're sick. Yeah. I actually, in extreme yeah. cases, I'm sure you could tell, right? Well, There's probably so, some obvious signs. So check out the study, right? So this was published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society. So what they did is they, they injected people with this, uh, what did they inject them with? They ejected them with something that activates the immune Syphilis. system. Syphilis. No, it wasn't something terrible. <laughs> Good. Because that would be mean. But they, but, it's but, a fucked up test yeah. group. But yeah. they, they, okay, here oh, we go. Oh, by the way, you have herpes now. Oh, man, no. <laughs> yeah, we could tell. Yeah. No, no, they administered and injected of a lipopolysaccharide, which is a molecule found on some pathogenic bacteria that provokes a strong immune response. So didn't necessarily make them sick, but activated the immune, the immune response, so they kind of, 
you know, would look like they were. Mm. Felt and sick. It, so they took a picture of the person when they were healthy and a picture of them after they got this injection. So they look like clammy, pale, like like dark bags circles. Of the eyes. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what's the so the 62, description? So 62 people looked at the pictures and with 80 over 81% accuracy could tell. We're able to tell which one was sick. Yeah. And it supports the notion that humans have the ability to detect signs of early signs of illness. Uh, after exposure to infectious stimuli, mm. isn't that kind of cool? It is, but those are one of those studies that, like, uh, what about uh, somebody like Johnny Depp? Like, he always looks sick. He does a little bit, doesn't you know he? I mean, you might yeah. be, you might be wrong. I don't know why girls like that. Well, that's probably so why it's eighty-one percent, not a hundred percent accurate. Because some, yeah, people, some people, some people have it. sick face. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a resting <laughs> sick face. Yeah. Yeah. Resting sick face. So yeah. the biggest giveaways were pale skin, hanging eyelids, pale lips, and red eyes. Ew. That's what they were able to, yeah. yeah. I mean, but if you think about it, evolutionarily speaking, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You're going to want to tell if somebody's sick by looking at them, right? Yeah. yeah. So you don't I feel their- like it's kind of obvious, though, too. Like, when you are when you don't feel well, you, 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 you're you not smiling and laughing. You know, you don't have, like, this joy joyful-looking face. Mm-hmm. You have this, like, borderline depressed, and I feel like shit. Well, so like- I'm looking <laughs> at the pictures, because they actually have pictures of the people. Uh-huh. And in both sets of pictures, they were all they were they were told to look neutral. Uh, so it's not like one of them. They're like, trying to just kind of like <laughs> that'd be too obvious, Adam. <laughs> well that's what I mean. <laughs> Which like- one is sick? The one who's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the other guy's smiling Snivels, the other just yeah, like, like wiping his nose. But I mean don't you feel like that? I mean that to me that's that's the obvious sign. Like when yeah, somebody yeah. is normally a happy go lucky person and then all of a sudden they're under the weather. You ever you meet someone see. like that though that's not they don't have any of the classic signs of poor health like they're not obese they're not whatever but you look at them and you're just like that guy doesn't look or that girl just doesn't look something doesn't look healthy yeah. about them you know what i mean we're real good at finding inconsistencies you yeah know? like like pointing like especially kids if you hang out with kids oh, they're so brutally honest, honest about those things but you know where i see this a lot i'll see this a lot sometimes in people in the muscle building bodybuilding space who mm. are on a ton of steroids yeah. mm-hmm. and overfeeding themselves and they have, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. That 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 steroid look, yeah, yeah. where their, their skin is kind of red, yes, yep. bloated, and you know, you know, and you're like, yeah. oh, that guy doesn't look too healthy. Just veins throbbing. You know, that's funny you bring that up because that brings me up to a hot topic that's been going around in my DMs. That because since that last episode that we did uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the health at any size, and I mm. uh, totally offended. Uh, at least one or two people that uh, you know responded to that and felt were they were pissed off. What at, were they pissed off about? Uh, they just they felt that I I shit all over the idea uh, and they singled me out personally. I guess whatever rant that I went on, I don't know how much more I was. I must have been uh, more aggressive about uh, how I felt about it in comparison to you two. Um, and I went on some sort of a rant about it. And then I posted a poll the other day about uh, the, the study we talked about with the projection of over 50% of the country being obese by uh, 2030. 2030. Yeah. And now, s- now, that's according, that is if we stay on the current right. trajectory because we don't know if it changes. Right. right. And so I, I did a poll, obviously, to stir the pot a little bit that just said, you know, do you think that health at any size helps this issue or mm-hmm. makes it worse? And I think 98% people thought it would be worse, but there was the 4%. And 4% of the following that I have is still, you know, I think even almost 1,000 people uh, voted the other way, which so I, you know, got 1,000 people that are irritated at me right now. And, you know, I had somebody DM me and they were saying, well, you know, I think this is, I think it's bullshit because you can be healthy at any size. I'm, for example, I run marathons, I do tough mutters, I do this, I do that, I lift weights. And I, when I do my skin fold measurements, I'm still considered obese on the chart. And I said, well, just because somebody can do a Tough mutter, run a marathon, and and do all this stuff doesn't necessarily make them healthy either, to your point that you're making right now about bodybuilders. Just because somebody has a ton of muscle on their body- And low body fat. Right, and low body fat doesn't mean they're healthy yeah, or well, are the healthiest version of themselves. Also, they're missing the point. The point is that- Let's say you you let's say you do have a lot of body fat on you. Let's say you do have what would be considered uh, an obese body fat percentage, but you do exercise on a regular basis. You do have good stress management. You do get good sleep, and although you eat more than you need to, the food that you do eat is healthy. Okay, can you still be healthy? Yes. Could are you as healthy as you could be if your body fat was lower? No. Mm. So in other words, what that means is at some point. High body fat takes away from your health. Now, that doesn't mean that you're necessarily unhealthy. It just means that it's a detriment to your health. You could also have somebody who, you know, eats 
not as good, but because they exercise and do other things to offset it, doesn't mean they're as healthy as they could be. At some point, high body fat percentage will will be a detriment to your health regardless of anything else. That doesn't mean you're necessarily unhealthy. Right. It just means it's now taking away from. I definitely think like you can have somebody like that that exists, but it's such a small uh, group a number like it in terms of like if you're gonna judge a movement uh you know of steering people in the right direction i just don't see it i don't see it i i, I see a, a massive crutch uh that's sort of waving a flag of like well you know i'm gonna go well at any size i could be healthy so like i'm gonna accept this of who i am versus like you know that that person that is you know making healthy choices eating just eating a lot of healthy food like i just don't see that happen well, that's where somebody got it somebody yeah. was offended because they it was somebody who the website that's dedicated to what's the acronym i don't even remember what the acronym was of what? health at any healthy at any size ass or is it yes health at, it was something like that though right? yeah, you remember know. what it is Hoss? doug yeah Hoss. it's 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 healthy <laughs> at any Hoss. size right <laughs> Stop, the Justin. Irony. Stop, Justin. Yeah. That's not the acronym. I'm sorry. I think it is. I think Justin's right. I think it's H A A S. I think uh, it's something like that, right? They, I don't remember what the fucking acronym is. But anyways, the website that's dedicated to that, the person, the people were or pissed off because they felt that we didn't do enough research on exactly the message that they're presenting in there. Oh, hey. Oh uh, man. There it is. Hayes. And they are oh, saying hey. that that Hayes. this okay. the message was received by this person. And it's changed their life, mm. and that they, you know, that it's what's helped them get back into into shape. Yeah. Well, here's here's the message. The message is, you, you should always love yourself. That's that's number one. Right. Hundred percent. And take care of yourself like you love yourself. Now, there's a there's a misconception out there that if you just care about yourself, you're going to be overweight. That's not true. Yeah. If you truly care about yourself, you'll be you won't be overweight. Your body doesn't want to be overweight, just like it doesn't want to be underweight. Being overweight isn't necessary. Is typically not as healthy as being an appropriate weight, just like being underweight is. So if you're, you know, 60 pounds overweight and you and you're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna accept myself because this is me being healthy. I mean, and of course, there's individual variances, maybe uh, maybe based on your current condition and standards and the context of your life, that is the healthiest that you can accomplish. But you can also be honest with yourself and say, okay, I'm not optimal. This isn't optimal for me. It's very simple. That's what it is. Be honest with yourself. Exactly. It's very simple. You measure your body fat percentage and it reads you are obese. Okay? That doesn't mean you are fat. It means you have lots of fucking fat on your body that doesn't belong there Mm -hmm. and you don't need. Bottom line, you don't need to, you don't have to identify with. You're not locked into that. You are not fat. You have lots of fat on your body, which is unhealthy for your body. That's a fact. And if you're reading that high, it is a fact. It is unhealthy for your body to have that high of a body fat percentage. It doesn't mean you are fat. You don't have to identify with that. It's a reflection of the choices that you make, which may be over consuming food, which is most likely, and or or both not moving or exercising enough. And maybe you are somebody who does exercise and can run and do those things. But if you are reading obese, you are still, it's always comes back to law of thermodynamics here. You're obviously eating more than you're exercising and you're putting on body fat. Well, it would be like if someone came up to me, let's say I'm at the bar with you guys, we're hanging out, we're drinking. Someone goes, oh my God, Sal, mind pump. You're drinking alcohol. That's unhealthy. And I'm like, actually, yeah. you know, it's healthy when you're, no, I'll be like, yeah, you're right. I'm having a good time. Right. You know, like it's okay to be honest with certain things, but that doesn't mean you need to hate, hate yourself. And it doesn't no. give anybody the excuse to belittle you or make you feel like you're less than human. Right. right. Yeah. Because nobody is perfect and nobody treats themselves I'm definitely against that. Perfectly. Yeah. You know, so the problem with being overweight is it's a very visual representation of maybe something you're not perfect with. You can't look at someone and see that they have a credit score of 500 or that, you know, that they're terrible with their friends and stuff like that. But sometimes you can look, oftentimes you can look at someone and say they're overweight. And unfortunately that makes them targets for a lot of people. And I know, I think that's where this movement came from. You ha- you don't have the right to treat someone like shit just because of whatever, unless they did something terrible to you. Right, you, know, right. you go up to, because I see a lot of fitness people like that. It makes them feel righteous. They walk up to fat people and like, you're unhealthy, you're fat, you know, therefore I'm better than you. Right, or okay. like the message you brought up the other That's day about correcting one of the trainers the worst. that we know, which is the, the oh, there's more enough time in the day, you can do this, and, and that message of pointing that out to them, like, oh, it, the, you're lazy or this. Yeah. It's not that. Like, I can, I can totally have empathy for that person, and I don't think that I'm judging that person, mm-hmm. but it's a fact. Mm-hmm. If you measure 
at 40% body fat, it means you have a, enough body fat on your body. It is detrimental to you. That's it. It we is just not need to maintain. We need to maintain some standardization. I mean, we just need something out there that you know people can try and achieve and acquire. You know, a better version of health. And and you know, if that's a metric that you know maybe has some wiggle room and there's some outliers out there that can you know be healthy at you know a higher range that exists. But it's it's we're talking about like you know, the majority of people out there. Yeah, and. I mean, look at the at the end of the day, uh, your body fat percentage is a is a side effect of your state of health. It's not necessarily, but it would also contribute to your health. So what I mean by that is, if you're overweight, it's because it's a side effect of a lifestyle, and that lifestyle is a side effect of your state of mental health and psychological health. And if you're eating too much, it, it you're it's not good for you. And it's not and and the reason why you're eating too much is probably because you're not at the most healthy state of mind. When I would work with, I've worked with a lot of clients who struggled with weight a lot. It was one of my favorite categories of people to work with, people who are in the severe obese category. And I eventually became very successful training these people, but it wasn't because, it was because I realized getting them to lose weight wasn't going to make them happy. I had to get them to learn how to be happy first. Yeah. Then they would start to lose weight. It was always that. I have yes. never met somebody who was I? And I have trained hundreds of those. I also love this category of somebody who is morbidly obese and they're trying to change their life. And they come to me. Mm -hmm. And what I always figured out, it wasn't this. They didn't understand the science of nutrition. They didn't understand the science of exercise. They were there was something else that was underlining that they weren't addressing. And a lot of times it was something that they were unhappy with and they were coping with it through food and the lack of exercise. And it wasn't until I addressed that and helped that out. Did the, all the weight come off and stay off for the rest of your life? It was always that. It was right. never. It was never like, oh, I just didn't know what I was doing, and I got to this mm -hmm. point. It's no, I was mindlessly eating for so many years and trying to bury right. something. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why it's different because it is like the message is love yourself. Like that's that that is where you need to be in the state of mind because it is so psychological coming in. Like a lot of times where you know people are find themselves like overweight and obese. Like it, you know their their state of mind is a major Major contributor to that, and so finding that you know way to to to, to love yourself again and to to want to improve yourself is everything. Not to just you know become love yourself and be complacent in that, but not work on yourself. Yeah, it's just you know, and it's funny. It's uh, I think I feel like modern life is just a whole series of figuring out how to medicate yourself in one way or another. You know what I mean? Like you go to you go to family parties and you see. The people drinking the alcohol. Why? Because they need to loosen up so they can hang around with people or people that smoke in the cigarettes or I got to have my coffee every single day or I got to use food. I got to use food to medicate. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, look, it's your, your, if you're listening and you're obese and this is your issue, that's fine. You know, work on it. Um, uh, but it doesn't make you worse than everybody else. You're not a, no. a piece of shit. Everybody listening has got to deal with something yeah. that they're working through, but it doesn't help to not be honest about it. And, and, and what some people do with the health is uh, the health at any size movement is they interpret that as it doesn't matter. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm healthy and it doesn't affect me in any negative way, uh, no matter how overweight I get, which is just plain, not true. It's and I wrong. think, and that can be hurtful, although I don't think that's the movement itself. That's how some people interpret it. And that's the, right. the, that's where you get some of the issues. And, and of course there's a lot of individual variants. One person can be obese and have far better health than someone else who's at a normal, you know, body weight. There's so many factors that play into that. But at the end of the day, if you, you, your optimal health is probably not obese, regardless of your fitness level and all that stuff. I mean, speaking of anecdotes, there was an article of this, this woman who was talking about her secret to longevity. She, mm. she's 104 years old. So she got interviewed uh, to uh, she got interviewed by a, a you know, like a news network like you know, yeah. what's, what's your secret to living? Oh, the people that make those are always like cigarettes and bacon. I know it's always <laughs> <super> <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they make the oh, news, smoke and meth. yeah, yeah, yeah that's Whoa. it. <laughs> it's funny you said that. So I'm going to read from the article. If you're going to live to 104, you might as well do it in style. Teresa Raleigh of Grand Rapids, Michigan, just celebrated another birthday on January 1st. Uh, she's 104 years old. Her secret to longevity: drinking lots of diet coke. 
So she, <laughs> every she, single day she drinks she just one. amounts it just to that. She's been drinking Diet Coke for decades every wow. single day, and she says that that's the secret to her. <laughs> Sponsored by living alone. There's that. people that are like that, right? That I I think that are just uh, this is it's like we talk about this with bodybuilding. We talk, uh, genetic. This just shows you how genetics. We got. I was just talking to my brother-in-law about marijuana marijuana strains like this. You know, we. Uh, in, I'm gonna take you left but i'll bring it back here when you do like when you grow marijuana there's all these you know teas and recipes and and measuring the water ppis you could do all this stuff to try and get this flower to be amazing and you can you can really manipulate it to make it super high potent make it smell super strong look frosty and amazing but at the end of the day nothing is more impactful than getting incredible genetics if you get like yeah. the original cut of of a a plant and it and it was taken well care of and it's got good genes sometimes you could just give that sucker water yep. and it will end up out producing the thing that you spent thousands of dollars on all these formulas to try and get it to produce so the same thing is is with this, and I totally lost my train of thought. How I was going to take it from marijuana <laughs> over this? Oh, about people living a long time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, there's some people that are so res- speaking of marijuana, you <laughs> forgot. <laughs> what? Some people are so resilient that I, I, it doesn't matter if they did have bacon and fucking cigarettes every single day. They were. Well, gonna it's live genetics, to- but it's also yeah. other factors in their life. In like spite may- of all maybe that. this well, of maybe this woman has amazing relationships with the people around her, which yeah. which that has a huge impact. Maybe her rest of her diet's healthy. Yeah, but even those, but even, also, even, though, even those things, I I would still make the case that genetics still play totally. a, a larger role than dude. My great grandfather, bro, since he was twelve or thirteen, so right around there, started smoking cigarettes, and this is back in system. There's no filter, so he'd roll them up in paper. As a matter of fact, as he got older, he would buy rolled cigarettes and he'd cut the filter off because he hated the filter. <laughs> He's he chain smoked. You know what that means? That means. As one is going out, he lights it with another one. So from morning till bedtime. Yeah, my grandma was like this. The only time he stopped yeah, smoking yeah, yeah. is when he would sleep. Or eat. Or eat. When mm-hmm. he would eat, he put the cigarette next to him on the ashtray. Like a walking cloud. And then just constantly. He was 94 years old when he finally died. The guy was just constantly. He lit his bed on fire a couple times. because <laughs> He'd Dude. go to sleep with a cigarette in his mouth. Are you it, serious? Yeah, and it would fall and light the sheets on fire. That's crazy. And my great grandma would like put it out and get pissed How off. How crazy is that? Ninety three <laughs> die from like fire in your bed sheets before you die from <laughs> you know cancer. What I'm <laughs> but you're to- but you're right. The genetics play such a you know such a such a huge role. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I, I want to tell you guys about something cool that I just read about Texas. Texas is kind of an interesting state, isn't it? It's yeah. They it's, have a lot going on. It's there. much different than uh, than California, that's for sure. Yeah. So in Texas, you can actually so here's there's a law in Texas that states that any two individuals who feel the need to fight can agree to mutual combat through a signed for or even just verbal or implied communication. We talked about this Wait, a long time wasn't ago. Wasn't that in Canada though? There's before? another place there, that has there's a, a yeah. there's a term for it, right? Isn't there like a dual term? Mutual combat, I think it's yeah, called it's something a, like that. Now, as long as no serious bodily injury occurs and both participants know what degree of risk they're, ha- they, they're taking, it's a defense for a criminal or civil suit. Hmm. So you beat the shit out of somebody and then they take you to court or you're going to go to jail. You could say, no, 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 no. He walked into this. We thing. agreed. Yeah. We yeah. agreed to a fight. I love this. So do I. I, I lo- love it. I love this. Not because, I, not because I love fighting. I think people should fight. But because I feel like there should be consequences if you're going to start shit with someone, yeah, they, they should be able to be like, fine, let's go outside. We don't need outside. to go run and get dad to come help you with your own fights. Mm-hmm. You know, like handle your business. See, I feel like in a place like this, if you're in a bar and a dude's like, oh, fuck, and you go, okay, let's go outside. Let's agree to this and let's go outside. Someone record yeah. it. Right. And you'll see who the real <laughs> the real tough guy is. Hey, if right. you've been around, I've been around situations, I've been a part of situations like that where that happens. And you know what's funny? Afterwards, a lot of times the guys hug it out. Yeah, they're cool. Like, they're hanging out afterwards. There's a, a, a respect thing Right, after, it, yeah. it peaked. We're mad. We're so angry at each other. We want to duke it out. We agree. You know, all right, fuck it. Let's go see who is tougher. Right. They yeah. end up rolling People around. People don't for- understand that. I think that we've gotten away from that. And like, oh, like everybody gets so like, scared and and like oh my god i can't believe that they would like resort to violence but it's like dude sometimes you just have to get it out like you got like that energy like exists within well, if it, you believe we're animals i mean that's a natural well, animal there's, there's animal instinct there's i mean there's healthier outlets for it for sure I mean, there's I different totally kinds good. too there's like sucker punching someone or oh, you and yeah. your friends beat someone up or yeah. you use a bottle or you hit them over there versus okay let's go outside he, this guy over here is going to record it so we can say we're both going to fight. And yeah. if I hit, if you knock it down, I'm not going to go 
jump on your head or beat, and I'm not going to try and kill you. Right. And let's do this. Those are the rules. No one's going to jump in, and then let's do it. Now, is it violent? Sure, there's still somebody's going to get hurt, but, w- but way more civil. Way more civil than what happens at bars, where where you know guys looking one way and someone hits in the back of the head or people jump in. Yep. That's one terrible. But I, f- I find that hilarious how that's in in Texas, not in California. No, yeah. uh, in California, the winner goes to jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, we both agreed, but I but I won. I'm going to jail. <laughs> yeah, it's a oh, bunch of bullshit. Man. Yeah, that's stupid. Dude, anyway. did you guys hear about that bodybuilder that was trying to marry his his sex doll? What? Yeah, I I, I think Jackie posted this in our thread where every now and then she sends like an article. I, I knew I this was this. coming, bro. And it was like so in Kazakhstan, I think is where it was. So this bodybuilder guy. I mean, he's a fit, you know, good looking guy, whatever. And I guess you know bought a sex doll and then has created this persona for her as an instagram account for her <laughs> what? like really got into her got cosmetic surgery for her and then the, decided well let's make this official and now is marrying did a you sex just doll. make that up about her having an instagram account or she really have no, an I'm instagram serious doug please oh my oh my god you found there it. it is yeah. You found it. Please give me the Instagram. I want to see. I, I mean, this guy looks like a normal guy, too. You know, it's like. Obviously, what? he's not. Obviously not. Right? Yeah, obviously it's, not. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't Doug. have sick face. So here's the, here's the me. part. Here's the part that I think is crazy. Well, okay. Well, it's the Instagram account. I'm trying to. You just. What is it? You, you have what does it right that there? say, Doug? I mean, what? Margo party. Margo, Margo party. underscore. Yes. Margo underscore party. Oh, yeah. fine. It's probably a bunch of ass shots. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the part that's crazy. I mean, she's hot. So he's he's having. She's she looks like a. She's got like a hardcore Valencia. Adam's like, give it the hey, five she, years. She's got a hardcore Valencia filter going on here. Yeah, uh, it's hot. I don't think you can refer to it yeah, as a what, she. Uh, yeah. He, really? So it's a doll, bro. Well, she does. So I mean, he does. He so he he gets a sex doll, has sex with it. Fine, weird enough, but whatever. Yeah. Then he decides I'm gonna marry it. Well, it's a doll. Why, why? Are you gonna marry it? You yeah, can get why? as many as you want. Right. It makes no. She's not going anywhere. Now you're limiting yourself. Put her in the closet. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Get home from work. She's now right is there. is is Margot supposed to be her or it, and he's someone else, or is his name Margot? Uh, wow, think, he, you guys got to go through his page. This I is literally great. have no idea. He's actually like a good looking dude. That's what I'm saying. It's How like, many followers does he have? Well, Margot. If Margot is him or her, I don't know. She's got almost yeah. he or what? What? I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's the yeah, girl's fuck name me up is that I can't call her a her. Oh, okay. Yeah. It has got almost eighty thousand followers. More, yeah. way more than I do. I know. What the hell's the world coming to? Yeah. Yeah, who takes a picture like that? Wish he's we had like a holding sex, her up. Wish we had a sex and he's doll just for her, her boob. Yeah. yeah. I don't like the way he treats her though. You can tell yeah, he's not very. He's nice too to her. aggressive. Yeah, yeah. She's not very. Taking her out in public. What? What? Hey, what does that say about us though, as a society that eighty thousand people find a need to follow this person? It's just eighty thousand. Yeah, 80,000 people oh are following a sex doll's account. People are just like, what the hell? You know, like, let's see what, what's next. You really? Know? Like, yeah. really, though? Like, you follow this account? Like, 80,000 people are, like, watching what a, just all these photos of a sex doll? Oh, man. You know what's yeah. going to get really weird when these dolls, because they're, they're going to take over the IG, you know, well, these, the model space. these sex dolls are getting really, I mean, it looks like a dead person is what it looks like, but it's going to get weird when they look. Like you can't distinguish them between you know humans. I, I don't oh, think yeah. we're that far off from that. That's going to be weird, man. It's that Westworld, so I can't wait till that second season comes. That out. comes. What is it? It comes out early or soon, doesn't it? I hope so. You yeah. know what started that I haven't watched yet is you. That just dropped. Mm. Oh, a new season oh, that's for today. That? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go watch that yeah. Yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, that's that. gonna be really good. I know. I'm excited, dude. I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, I had some uh, pork. Uh, over the holiday season, some like pork chops or whatever. I thought yeah. you were going to transition that when I brought up the bacon and cigarettes. I thought that was a perfect segue for you. No, no. I tried no, to no, assist no. you and you just missed it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I had a, uh, <laughs> I had a, I had a piece of pork. No, this is good though. Yeah. yeah. And um, you ever, sex you, dolls pork. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Porking. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Justin. Yes, I got you, Sal. <laughs> pork can be dry sometimes. You know, like your pork chops or whatever. It's like called the white meat, whatever. Yeah, it is dry. Sometimes. This was marbled it was delicious or whatever i asked my my aunt where they got it um it's heritage pork you know heritage so you know heritage pork i never heard of that until recently when you when you did a butcher box commercial and you brought that up i didn't even know that was a thing yes so heritage pork is more marbled it's got more of a creamy texture to it because they let the pigs roam around they eat all over the land and they gain more body fat in the meat to withstand the temperature changes and stuff that are out on the farm versus mm. keeping pigs contained 
inside. Pigs are supposed and to controlling have controlling the climate and everything right, inside. They're yeah. supposed to have a certain level of fat on their body. Now that seems that's different than grass fed. Right, meat. that's different. That's, different than grass fed meat. That's that's funny that 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 way that works that way for pigs because it's the opposite with grass fed beef. Grass fed beef is leaner because it grazes all over the place and they're not getting pumped full of grain. No, they they regulate their body temperature through colder mm. climates with more fat. Um, and then of course they they're treated better because they they roam around and rubbage through land or whatever. Versus, because what happened with pig, uh, with pork, remember when that whole, like, the other white meat, remember that whole campaign? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, remember that That's campaign. when everybody was demonizing red meat. Mm -hmm. So the pork industry was like, oh, white meat, we can make it leaner, and it's white. And the way they did that is they kept the pigs mm. confined, and so you get that dry pork chop or whatever. Heritage pork, obviously, you know, you need more land and stuff for it, but it's more, uh, it's more humane. And the meat tastes so much better. So I heard, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but that like Christopher Columbus was responsible for bringing over like the uh, wild, pig? yeah, wild pigs oh, really? in, I don't know yeah, in North America. Well, I know that they brought them to Hawaii and they, they're so many of them yeah. over there. Well, that's definitely, yeah, that, 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 that totally changed did the you know landscape. It's, I think it's legal in Hawaii for you to kill like up one or two pigs every day. Hmm. Anybody can kill that, one. Isn't, isn't Texas like that too? I don't know. Texas yeah, is where you could like shoot them with a machine like gun out of, yeah, the out of a helicopter, right? Exactly, yeah. Wow, exactly, yeah. wow that's, 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 a, that's a little too much though. <laughs> that's a, yeah, really? That's you would want to do that? Uh, I mean, just just in a helicopter, just machine gun? Well, I'm going to remember that in, when in I book a, a trip for us. kind of It's going to save me money. i got to get three. Doug, you want to go, right? No. Count me in. Doug's in. No, the original father of the American pork industry is Hernando de Soto. He brought the world America's first 13 pigs to Tampa Bay, Florida in 1539. Wow. Oh. That's so interesting that we, we have that documented. Yeah. Like somebody's like, you know what? Hey, make sure you write this down. First 13 pigs coming over here. Mm. Like yeah. who would have thought to do that? Yeah, I know. Is that true? Even? Right. That's why I, That's why I'm saying that. Like, is that even true where they were already fucking here? Yeah, yeah no. Mm. Maybe Justin's theory is right. What? Uh, that it came over with Columbus. With Columbus? Yeah. Well, yeah. Was he part of that whole voyage? No, I think not? Columbus was- uh, Before. What's the song? Something, something. 1492. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, so he came before. Yeah. Good job, Justin. You're remembering stuff today. I, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> a little less head trauma, yeah. I guess, uh, as a plate. Yeah. Anyway, uh, here's another thing. Um, do you guys get messages from people who are looking for alternatives to caffeine for energy? Like when they're trying to wean themselves off caffeine? No, oh, all, yeah. all the time because we yeah. talk about that. Yeah, so rhodiola. Rhodiola's got to mm, be mm – -hmm. it's not uh, – some people – don't like rhodiola, but most people do. And rhodiola is one of the only non uh, like stimulant type of uh, you know herbs or plants or whatever that has performance enhancing qualities like caffeine. So in replace of, or are you saying in replace of? Okay, so so like, let's say you're going off caffeine. Yeah, so and, you can kind of wean off a little bit. Yes, and because caffeine is a, look, caffeine it's a monster, dude. It feels so good. When your body's sensitive to it, when you're when you're desensitized because you're having it so often, it just keeps you normal. It just makes you yeah. Or you can even start to feel like shit. But you know, yeah. how does it feel when you go off caffeine and go back on? Yeah, amazing. it's like a magic drug or whatever. <sighs> yeah, yeah. So going Magical. off going off of it, I think is very very important. But the problem is when you go off it's withdrawal symptoms, you feel like shit, you feel unmotivated, sometimes depressed because your body had gotten so used to caffeine. So rhodiola is something you can take in the interim. So go off caffeine, go on rhodiola. You'll get you'll, it'll give you energizing effects. Could help with your mood. The Soviets uh, did a lot of experimentation. With is that rhodiola. now? Is that in the red juice? What's that in? That's in the uh, yes, it is. It's in Organifi's red juice. They have beetroot powder in there too, which is good for performance. Rhodiola, and they also have cordyceps in there. So that's probably a really good alternative for somebody who is trying to come off of caffeine, but still wants some sort of totally performance totally. gains. Yeah, okay, that's hundred cool. percent. And it also has uh, it's an adaptogenic qualities as well. So it's really good for for stress. Um, now, some people taking too much rhodiola makes them not feel so good. So you'd have to test it out for yourself. But most people seem to have a good response from rhodiola. And again, it's one of the more studied. Uh, adaptogenic compounds out there that has actual clinical proven is, benef uh, positive effects. On is that considered a mushroom or no? No, it's not. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Because no. I, I, the doesn't the four sigmatic guys have that too or no? Do they put rhodiola in their stuff? Yes, I think they might mm -hmm. put some rhodiola in their stuff as uh, well. Oh yeah, I was yeah. under the impression that it was a, yeah, a mushroom but, because of that. No, no, but it's it's uh, that's not it. Um, uh, along those lines of uh, just kind of you know cognitive function that kind of stuff. Um, there was this big article I read on uh, on mental health and experts. I'm going to pull it up because I want to read to you guys what they were saying. 
experts are really making the case that that we should make um, exercise the first prescription for people with uh, mental health issues like anxiety and depression. This oh, is wow. starting to go uh, like big time uh, mainstream. This recent? Yeah. Yeah, this is main. I'm going to try and pull it up because I thought it was really interesting. Do you remember where you read it at? <clears throat> I'm going to try and find it right well, now. Well, that's a big angle. I mean, addressing mental health in general. I mean, everybody's sort of fixated on that right now just because you could, you could see just – you know, the anxiety is just rampant among oh, here. You know, the population. Here's what it said in the article. It said, researchers at the University of Vermont believe exercise should be prescribed to patients with mental health issues before psychiatric drugs. Mm. And then in a study of roughly 100 volunteers, 95% of patients reported feeling better, while 63% reported feeling happy or very happy. And the researchers suggest that mental health facilities should be built with gyms moving forward. Boom. My, gentlemen, I swear to God, in the next yeah, two or three decades, dude. yes, we're totally think, getting there. Do you think we'll see that in our time where like yes. hospitals actually have yep. like on floor 13 is like your whole fitness center and then there's like a training staff and everything and that's as part medicine, of- As medicine gets more expensive, yeah. as it becomes much more unsustainable, um, it's a cheap and it's super effective, actually more effective alternative to psychiatric drugs for a lot of people because it doesn't have any negative side effects. You exercise properly, it's all plus from, from there. And so the, the, what they're saying, they're trying to make an argument. This is a mainstream argument that if you go to the doctor with mental health issues, and st- that, that that's the thing that they prescribe yeah. and that they have a gym built into their facility. That's so cool. I mean, I saw a, a mini example of that when I was in Chicago and I was doing an internship at the, I think it was Condell Medical Center, but they had like an indoor track. They had uh, a physical therapist. They had, you know, all the a cardiologists. They had like every, uh, you know, specialty on staff in these uh, offices all the way around the complex. And so you can make appointments at any of those and then you'd have like the personal trainer down there working everybody wow. out it was like all in-house in one facility it was pretty cool well i don't know about you guys but uh when i would train clients the biggest changes i would see would be in their mental state yeah Big, oh, way bigger than the physical and in fact yeah. that was what they would report to me mm-hmm. they'd report to me that their their state of well-being and how they were at work and how they were i had one i used to train one guy who i don't want to give too much detail because it'll give them away and a lot of people around here know him but I used to train one guy who he was well known for being a bit of an asshole in his field. Anytime I'd bring his name up, um, other people who worked in that same space would tell me, "Oh, so and so, my gosh, he's an asshole. What a jerk!" Rick's or an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not Rick. No, it's Don't not Rick. Rick. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and he was he was even an asshole to me. But you know, I'm it doesn't phase me at all. I'm a, I've been training clients for forever. In fact, <laughs> you've trained lots of assholes. Yeah. If someone's, if someone's <laughs> kind of, yeah, you know, I laugh it off and sometimes I'll feed, I'll give it back to them a little bit, you yeah, know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I have fun with it. So it kind of made my day interesting. So I trained this guy for, for years. Well, anyway, later on, people will come up to me and be like, what have you done with so-and-so? But like, what do you mean? We're just working out. Like he's a totally different person. He tells jokes at work. Now he's giving people hugs. He's like a completely different transformed person. And what's funny is that 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 experience right there brought me more referrals than anything else because people saw him go from asshole to like cool guy. True transformation. And and he started referring, people started getting referred to me left (laughs) and right. His personality changed. What's happening? That was cool. First question is from Felix Flex 89. Is it counterproductive to do low reps and high reps in the same workout in terms of strength and hypertrophy? Hmm. You know what's, when they do studies on this, typically the studies are, in the same week, but I'm not too familiar with this. These different rep ranges being in the same I, I've read workout. St- I've read studies on it, and it's actually it. Uh, they're almost the same as uh, okay. somebody who is actually phasing. And this is kind of what we we've talked about this before. So it's like doing you know like some exercises, you know, under five reps. Other exercises, fifteen reps or twelve mm-hmm. reps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And each one has it kind of you know is a different type of adaptation on the body. Yep. And and there's and there's lots of benefits to doing this. Now the drawback, the main drawback of training this way, is uh, how tough it is to try and measure feedback or measure what's working well for you or what's not working well for you because you have so many variables in one workout. It's hard to say. Oh wow! Is it the hypertrophy type sets that I'm doing that I'm getting this great performance or this great strength gains or this great muscle that's being added to my body, or is it the the low reps and strength training exercises that I'm doing that's doing that? So, so when you compare in studies, totally fine if you were to do it this way. 
I'm not a fan of teaching it that way, nor training clients this way, because as a as a coach or a trainer, I'm always trying to measure and pay attention to, oh, in this block of, of training uh, for the next four weeks, we're going to be following these protocols. And I'm looking at feedback. Are they gaining weight? Are they losing weight? Right. Are they building so, muscles? So strength? an application, it's just, it doesn't, and I, I experienced the same thing. An application with clients and with myself, it works better to stick with mm -hmm. a particular rep range and style of training for a period of anywhere between two to maybe five weeks. And here's the other part that nobody ever talks about. There's a different, there's a different mental state. Oh, uh, good point. When you go into training low reps than when you go into training high reps. There mm -hmm. just is. It's it's when you're low rep training, it's typically longer rest periods. I'm trying to really focus in, focus yeah. in on the on the exertion with high yeah. reps. I'm trying to withstand the stamina. I'm trying to withstand the burn the pump. and the pump. It's a totally different mentality. And and do you think that your mental state can contribute to your performance and your progress? I mean, it's absolutely. Huge. Yeah, it's a huge part. Absolutely. Of it. So I don't like to necessarily do this too much. Now that being said. Some body parts and some exercises just work better with higher reps. So if I'm doing a low rep workout and I'm also going to throw in like rear flies for my rear deltoids, I'm not going to do low reps hmm. for my rear deltoids. Right. That's always going to probably be in the higher rep range in comparison. And when you're talking to somebody who is an advanced lifter, they've been lifting for a, a long time and they already understand uh, how to phase their workouts and manipulate ref, rep, rep, rep ranges and tempos and exercises – then having a, a day where you like decide to lift this way is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Completely yeah. okay, and it's, you're not taking steps back or you're not maximizing your gains. But it's completely fine. I do it occasionally all the time, but it's not. Uh, I don't think it's an ideal way when programming because it just it's it's difficult to measure and get good feedback if you're kind of throwing the whole kitchen sink at your body knowing like, oh, what, mm. what is really working right now? Yeah. I've actually uh, like steered away. I used to do that like a long, long time ago. I'd be, you know, guilty of doing like, I'll do like bench press for instance. And then like later on, I'll, I'll get a nice arm pump or something just because it's like, I'm just, you know, at that point more conscious of like what I want to look like and like leave, leaving the gym. And so I'll just do a nice <laughs> arm, arm pump or something like that. <laughs> you know, now it's like, the, like, what's the point? Like just stick, stick with what my goal is and like stick to the plan. And, you know, and so I'll, I'll be more likely to, to stick in the rep range that I'm, I'm doing for that entire workout. Next question is from Dave Kret. You talk about warm ups, but what about warm downs? Oh, is it warm downs or cool downs? You got to cool warm down. down, son. Yeah. <laughs> so a warm up or what we like to call priming is, you know, preparing your body for your workout. There's an optimal way to do it. It's by activating muscles, quote unquote, activating muscles that need to be activated by getting your body to move better by improving mobility so that when you go into your workout, it's more effective. But then you're done with your workout. Should you just stop your workout? Now you can, you can just stop your workout and it's not going to really be too detrimental but it's also not optimal. Post-workout, you can get some of the best deep stretching, some of the best foam rolling um, that you'll get ever because your muscles are pumped, they're warm, you just had a hard workout. Uh, some deep stretching, if you do it right and breathe properly, can also bring your heart rate down, get you more in a parasympathetic state. Well, that's, that's really the angle I would go the most, you know, in terms of like the post-workout, you know, mentality is really trying to get into that calm state. And, you know, how you get there is, you know, there's there's various methods. But I know in Prime, we, we had it where, you know, we're trying to solidify like certain positions. And so like going into static stretching or things like that. But the breathing is really important with that to, you know, calm, you know, the nervous system down to get you to that state. State where now we can actually start the recovery process. Well, that, there's a lot of benefit for just that reason right there for someone who's trying to optimize recovery and get their body into that, so especially if you know what kind of workout. So um, I don't know. I'm probably one out of every 10 to 15 uh, workouts do I probably put some energy and focus in this area. Um, for me, it's normally when I really get after it. So if I know I yeah. I fucking went all out and I stretched myself and I know and I I went crazy on my workout, which is rare, but when I do, uh, this is the time where I see a lot more value in getting into that parasympathetic state because if I'm gonna go eat and recover from that and I know how hard I push myself, the harder you push and the more extreme you go, the longer it's going to take for you to get to that other state. 
So doing something that's recuperative or calming or relaxing like sauna or foam rolling or static stretching will help promote that, like get you there faster. And then that's a more optimal time for you to be, you know, eating a balanced meal afterwards versus hammering the fuck out of the gym like crazy, a beast mode workout, and then pounding a shake right away. Not an ideal situation. Right, right. Now, I personally love the post-workout, uh, if I have time for it, deep static stretches. This is when I see value in static stretching. I'm not going to work out again, so static stretching can cause you to lose some temporary strength and all that because you're getting you know looser or whatever. But post-workout, when I have a really good pump and I hold – stretches for 30, 40 seconds, long stretches, and I do this through throughout the whole body, boy, does it feel phenomenal. I seem to get a better pump uh, through that stretching process. I feel like I recover better, and I just feel better. It does put me in that kind of relaxed state. Now, I we recommend uh, these you know post-workout, you know what we call uh, post-priming sessions or cool-down sessions in our program, MAPS Prime. I think they're overlooked. I think people look at our program and do – the pre-priming and forget the post-priming stuff, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to correcting uh, recruitment pattern uh, type issues. Like foam rolling is very effective post-workout when you're already pumped and whatever. Go through and foam roll the muscles that tend to be tight or whatever and then see how you move, see how it affects the following workout. That's really the, the gauge, in my opinion, is how much better are your following workouts mm -hmm. because you did that That I cool also down. I also feel that, and it's hard because it's hard to measure this, but I also feel like it... it uh, mitigates how sore I get too. It does. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, that's why I used to love getting like a deep tissue massage right oh. after like a hard leg day. Oh yeah. And if, if I can get uh, a, a massage from Katrina the day that I trained really hard versus a day or two later, like if she hits me after a really hard leg day, two days later, I'm at the peak of how sore I am and I'm sensitive to touch. Like, so she can't get in there and really work me versus the day of or right after a workout, which is ideal, right? And getting a deep tissue, I noticed that I don't get nowhere near as sore as mm -hmm. I would have if I wouldn't have done anything. I feel the same way about a good foam rolling session post hard workout like that too. Next question is from Ronert Nacho. I have a persistent knot on my left side of my neck and a knot on the right side of my back. I get relief when I work out, but the pain returns when I finish exercising. How can I better target these areas to relieve the pressured stress? All right, so these these knots, we don't really 100% know what they are. Um, we we kind of know why we get them, but we don't know really what they are. But the, the prevailing theory is that the there's a there's a segment of your muscle that's under a, a kind of a, a a low level of of flexing. So it's like imagine you flexing your bicep, right? So that's a full flex. But now imagine your bicep is just kind of tense a little bit, but it's like that a lot all day long. That's going to cause pain. It's going to make it feel like a knot. Now, why does it go away when you work out or why it, why does it go away when someone pushes on it like a massage therapist? Because when you work it out, the CNS relaxes a little bit, things warm up, you get inflammation out, you're working out other parts of your body. Or when someone's pressing on it like a massage therapist, that is telling the CNS to, to relax as well. And then it goes away. The reason why it's temporary is because you never fix what cause, what's causing it in the first place. Right. If you don't fix... The, re, the, the, the cause, the root cause of that issue, it'll only ever get temporarily better. It'll never get permanently better. So I would suggest it's, if it's in your neck and your upper back, I would look at your mobility in your shoulders. I would look at mobility in your thoracic spine and see if there's any muscle imbalances because your body's holding itself in a way that's suboptimal and that's what's causing the knots. And the, sub, the, the, the reason why it's suboptimal is you're not – moving in the best ways possible, the ways that, that use your muscles, utilize them in the, uh, in the, in the best ways. This reminds me of a question that we recently got about um, if they're suffering from upper cross syndrome. Uh -huh. Here's an example of somebody that would, would be considered probably suffering, and I'm uh, speculating, I don't know for sure, uh, without seeing this person, but more than likely suffering from uh, upper cross syndrome and what can cause that. This is really common in somebody who has forward head and rounded shoulder. So addressing the shoulder mobility and thoracic mobility, that's areas that you address when you have upper cross syndrome. And it's that being in that state all day long, whether you're sitting at a desk or working on computers or you drive somewhere and, and that sitting in that position that long tends to lock up or cause these knots. And that's where you get that chronic pain feeling. And until you relax the CNS or work on that, that gives you that temporary relief. But if you don't fix the posture, mm -hmm. 
and work on start working to address that, it'll just be a band-aid. You're constantly just putting a band-aid over it and keep reopening the wound. So the zone one in maps prime, that's what addresses this. That uh, we have you go through a zone one test, it's pass or fail, more than likely you fail from there. It tells you what movements that you should be doing to help correct this and prevent it from happening versus just fix it. You could fix it by getting the deep tissue massage or working out, but you want to start working towards preventing it happening. Yeah, and, and I know our wheelhouse is more of like the the exterior, exterior like muscle, like the, the major muscle groups versus like fascial tissue. But I know like books like Anatomy Trains that kind of like map out and highlight a lot of these fascial lines that really like put you in a lot of these fixed positions that you reinforce, you know, from your daily patterns over and over again. And so it is one of those things that um, it, it, this has to become like a ritual of being able to to, to, to wind that back and to, to come back to optimal posture, it takes a lot of like little, you know, frequent attempts of, of putting yourself in those type of positions uh, as much as you can. All right. Next question is from Amanda Cat 31 I have heard that pronation distortion can be caused by not doing enough ab work. I have severe pronation distortion, but I train my abs two to three times a week and have a six pack. Are there any other causes of this distortion? Are there any ab exercises that correct it? I've actually not heard someone use this term before. Yeah, so pronation distortion is when your foot pronates strongly, right? So it flattens out. Okay, well, she's referring to your abs. I know, which is kind of strange. So okay, that's what threw me off. Okay, I've never heard someone refer to their abdominal region to... To be causing it? Well, yeah. let's, we, can, we can discuss it a little bit and speculate because I haven't either, but t technically maybe... So again, pronation distortion, the your foot flattens out so that the your arch is kind of collapsed and your foot tends to turn out a little bit, causing your leg to turn out a little bit. So sometimes you can see this in people when they'll wear tennis shoes and the inside of their shoe is super worn out. It looks mm -hmm. like their foot is pushed to the inside and they so that's pronation distortion. Something like 60 to 80 percent of uh, of people have some degree of this, but it can get pretty uh, it can get pretty extreme, and it can cause problems. It can cause pain in the knee, pain in the foot, and the ankle, and the back. It's now, really common. It's really now now ab work and core work. Can this contribute to it? Maybe with poor core stability. More likely, it's a weakness of the ankle and foot. Uh, well, and, and not just weakness, but an imbalance. Well, I okay, so I get where this could be. Whoever told her this could be coming because if you have, if you have poor control, the the lumbo pelvic hip region, right? So if you have very like poor control of that and because you have no core strength um that could cause the your your femur to internally rotate which then causes the feet to pronate down below so i could see how that could contribute to this problem although uh i would i would work my way backwards right so i would actually uh, address my connection to my feet my ankle mobility totally. then, w then work my way up to my hip. at least this is what I did for me. So I have this right. So I had uh, you know my my foot, especially on one side, excessively pronated, um, and and it was really obvious when I squatted deep, uh, and it would also cause pain to run all the way up to my hip. So I had to relieve that by like foam rolling, like my IT area, and so that to give me relief. But then I had to do exercises for my feet. So a lot of my barefoot work that I would be doing and start working on better control there so I could keep my feet from flattening out. Some of that was uh, ankle mobility and feet strengthening type exercises like tippy toe squats or just being able to hold your feet in a, in a calf raise and in, in, in your ankles in a neutral position. Uh, that was some of the work that I did for my feet. And then I worked my way up to my hips, my 90-90. And then, of course, to reinforce that and keep me in a good, stable place, uh, having strong abs. But where you're having an issue with, oh, I have a six-pack, you can have a, a really strong abdominal region, but not holding your hips in the most optimal place, if that makes sense. You oh, yeah. Still you, you could be very, you could have very developed muscles. You could be lean and, and they could look strong. And they might even be strong, but your recruitment pattern may be totally off. Mm -hmm. uh, look at pro bodybuilders. Like, right. You know, some of the most developed athletes in the world. And oftentimes you'll find poor movement patterns with, the, with those muscles. A movement pattern is just how your muscles fire and how they fire together. So think of when you walk. Uh, and now imagine when you walk naturally, you're, when your right foot steps forward, your left arm also swings forward. So it's this counterbalance. Try walking where your right arm and your right leg 
move forward at the same time. Try walking that way. It feels really weird. Now imagine if that was your recruitment pattern. Imagine if that's how you learn walking. It would take you a second to learn how to walk the right way, but then when you did, you'd feel a massive difference and would feel far more comfortable. So you have, if you have a poor recruitment pattern, doesn't matter how big the muscle is or strong. In fact, I would say this, big, strong muscles with poor recruitment patterns can sometimes be more difficult to work right, with right. because they're so big and they're mm -hmm. so strong and because they're so set in their ways, uh, if you will. Um, now, in my, I, I haven't never worked with anybody who's had this issue because of core problems. Usually the root cause is coming from the foot and the ankle and then maybe the hip. Mm -hmm. Now, the hip, of course, goes up to the core. So the core could also, I'm not saying that's not, it's impossible. It's just not, it's, it's just uh, rare that I've seen this. So this person is saying, I've heard that this comes from the ab work. Unless a movement specialist is the one that told you this, right. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Yeah, unless I mean it's obvious that you're not able to to gain stability and you're kind of using that outward kind of push with your feet, you know, to to regain that sort of stability and you created like a pattern that, you know, solidified that and but yeah, I I would definitely agree with the guys. It's it's really it's it's a, it's a repatterning issue. Like we need to start really like using that as an exercise to walk a specific way to then uh, you know, start like forming those new patterns to to to, to go on from there. Well, if you lack good control internally and externally with the hips, which meaning you can't turn your leg in or yeah, out. Well. Yeah, yeah. If you lack good control there externally and internally rotating the hips both, really yeah. well. Um and that also will be worse if you don't have good control of your core, right? Because it's all connected. Um, the, it could make the issue worse. So I could see p potentially whoever told her this, I, I'm not going to come out and, and argue it and say they're wrong, uh, especially if there's somebody who's actually assessing you and seeing you. Maybe they see that you have an extremely weak core and that's and maybe they notice a breakdown when you get down in a deep squat with loaded a loaded barbell and then that's where all this breakdown happens. The, the femur rotates in and the knees collapse in and then the feet flatten out and that could all be starting from you just having a, a really weak core in the, and being able to hold your – uh, your your hips in the right position when you get deep into a squat. I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, so I could see where it could it, it could be a part of the problem, uh, but just getting uh, a strong core, uh, like what Sal was saying, like you could get a strong core and it not have the optimal recruitment pattern, and that not help the issue. No, so. I, I mean I've worked with clients who've got phenomenal, could do tons of crunches and sit ups and all that stuff, and they'd have back pain. And I'd have to go in and change their recruitment pattern. The back pain would be gone. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I doubt this is caused by your abs unless, again, a specialist examined you and said this is coming from your core. I highly doubt it. Um, my guess, my good, my strong guess would be that it's coming from your ankle, your foot, or your hip. Uh, those are the places that I would look. MAPS Prime Pro would be a good program for you to take a look at and, and, and see if you can figure that out. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They are all absolutely free. They cost nothing. Um, you can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.